What's up guys? Mike Dean gonna do another quick video. Uh, just just want to educate people on the simplicity of oxygenation. Um, this is gonna be pertaining to the freshwater hobby, not to the saltwater hobby. I'm not a saltwater guy, um, and, and I don't want to confuse any information that could be different with, with that aspect of the hobby. So like I said, this is gonna be geared towards freshwater, and it's just gonna be a simplified process in understanding oxygenation, making sure you've got enough and understanding how dissolved oxygen works how the gas exchange works, etc. Um, so what we're gonna get into is oxygenation as a whole. How does it happen? Um, the, the first thing to understand about oxygenation is gas exchange happens at the surface of the water. So let's say I throw an air stone in, I've got a brand new setup tank, um, the water's been sitting for, for a few days, there's no disruption, I know the oxygen levels are low, but I'm trying to get it ready to start a new cycle. Well, for instance, I just set up a new 40 gallon breeder rack and I've got two air stones in each breeder. And it's really because I don't like having empty fish tanks um, in my room. I had to put water in it. I had to get airflow going um, just so I could feel like it's, it's somewhat moving along. Um, but what I did is I dropped the air stone in and as the air rises from that air stone, it brings the water up with it and it creates circulation. Now what it also does is it brings all that water to the surface. Now, when water hits the surface, that's when your oxygen um, and your carbon dioxide exchange. What's gonna happen is your fish, just like human beings, are going to absorb oxygen. That oxygen is going to go into their bloodstream, flow through their tissue, um, and supply their body with, with what they need. What they're going to do is they're gonna breathe out carbon dioxide, or CO2, from their gills, from the respiration. Same thing we do. We breathe in oxygen, we breathe out CO2, carbon dioxide. Um, you know, it can be can be poisonous to us, and the same thing for the fish. So aeration is not just creating oxygen; it is allowing the gas exchange to happen and also removing CO2 from the equation. Um, CO2 is great for plants uh, and stuff like that, uh, but you really don't want your CO2 levels to to skyrocket because then your fish can suffer from it. Um, Surface disruption and circulation. I mean, that's that's really it. You don't even necessarily need an aerator to do so. Um, there are a couple different ways to create aeration. Um, you can simply throw an air stone in, uh, and that will, you know, the, the lower the air stone sits in the tank, um, the lower of a level of water will be able to be brought to the surface. So if, if I've got a, you know, 20 inch tall tank or 19 inch tall tank, and I put that air stone right at the surface, well, it's going to bubble, but it's not going to bring up any water with it. So you might over time have a little bit of water kind of staying at the bottom, not circulating, not releasing the CO2, and not becoming oxygenated. Um, but if I take that air stone and I drop it all the way down, it's going to create much more current, much more draft upwards in the water column, uh, and it's going to help you with that, that surface disruption and, uh, and oxygen exchange. The other thing that I stumbled on uh, about a year, year and a half ago, is the Venturi valve or Venturi effect, which is a theory. Um, I know that the, the uh, original philosopher, if you will, his, he was, his name was Venturi, just like we've got the Darwin theory and the, you know, Newton and, and all of their theories. It's the same thing. Um, and I'm gonna grab this, uh, this camera real quick and show you guys a custom canister filter that I built where I put a Venturi valve in and it's very simple. Uh, so here is the custom canister filter that I built simply out of PVC. Um, two-stage compartment, one for mechanical filtration and one for biofiltration, simply powered by an underwater pump. Excuse me for the glare. There's the pump right there. Runs up, goes through your first filter housing through nothing but mechanical filtration. Excuse me, I've got the tank painted. Comes back up into our second compartment where you've got nothing but K1 media and then it flows back out into what I have right here being a Venturi valve. Now all of this is, is an airline tube with a flow regulator up top so I can con you know, control how much air is actually getting into the line. And what it does is my return line goes underneath the water and because of that air, that air line in the tube, it pulls the oxygen from the air in down through the tube into the water column. So is this better than an air stone? No, not in my opinion. Um, I really like the sponge filters and my personal opinion is if you're going to drop an air stone in the tank, you might as well drop an air stone in a sponge filter in your tank. That way the air stone is also creating filtration as well as oxygenation. But you can see right what we've got right here 
is the air stones in this sponge filter and as it rises it's pulling that water up with it so you continually have this circulation continue circulation right here and what you're going to do is look for that oxygen exchange at the top and that's that's really it you know um when it comes to oxygenation you can over oxygenate a tank and i don't mean you're producing too much oxygen i mean you're producing way too much current and way too much power um angelfish for instance they like a moderate um you know low current something that's got good circulation but not something they're having to fight against with koi what are you know the fish that i originally started my hobby on you need high 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 circulation these fish love to post up in high current stretch their dorsal and pectoral fins out and just stretch and and just swim along that current they love it but the angel fish are different so when i started doing angel fish tanks i had to drop down the oxygenation a little bit <clears throat> and kind of go by my species of fish see if they're comfortable if they look like they were having to fight the current turn the air down and and get as much of that oxygenation as you can with the fish being able to be comfortable in their environment now with this venturi valve i'm going to come up top and i'm going to unscrew this control valve a little bit to increase the aeration to show you how well this actually works and it's just a nice little way to throw some aeration in the tank without having to go spend 20 25 bucks on another aerator you can see that's a pretty sufficient amount and periodically you got to take this little valve apart and just clean it and that'll increase your oxygenation as well now i've also in this 55 grow out have a eheim 80 gallon um, canister filter and i've done the same thing to it it's got its return line here you can see the low amount of oxygen coming through and all it is guys is another venturi valve with a little control nozzle on it very simple very easy way to create some oxygen without having to go spend more money all you need is an airline tube and a control valve and you know a drill um so guys leave your comments uh give us a thumbs up if you like the video just really trying to speak to beginners get them started off on the right foot so they've got the basic understandings thanks for your time hope you have a good one